Welcome back once again to Introductory R for Economists. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at some stuff to do with censored data models. Uh, there are certainly some models uh, or some data sets in which we can't observe all the data that we want to observe, particularly the dependent variable. Uh, and there are two kinds of models that we're going to be looking at that you might are likely to see in your undergraduate economics education. We're going to start with the Tobit model, uh, which helps us out when we have some data that is censored between two areas. And we also are going to look at the Heckman model, which is where we have uh, something that's going to model selection into a data set, where some of our data, uh, we can't see the dependent variable, uh, and for some other data, we can. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to load in, once again, our with our foreign package, our wage one data. Now for this to work, uh, we need to have some actual censored data. Now, unfortunately, this data set that we're working with and familiar with doesn't have any. So let's go ahead and manufacture some. Uh, so let's go ahead and pretend that all the wage observations below three are missing, okay? So let's make everything below three for wage missing, all right? So the way we're gonna do that, uh, we can do that with indexing. Uh, so we're going to say take wage one data, okay, uh, and we want to look at wherever the wage itself is below three, okay, uh, and so we're going to take that subset of our data set. We're going to pick the wage variable and we're going to set it equal to missing it, NA. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So now uh, if I look at the wage one data set, I can start scrolling down. I can see all, all of my wage variables uh, up here looking pretty good, but they're all above three. If I keep scrolling down, eventually I'm going to find one that used to be below three, but now I have set it to miss it. All right, so this is going to be the data. We're going to pretend that the data came like this, all censored, and we're going to go ahead and model it with the Tobit model. Uh, Tobit is going to be in the sense reg, short for uh, censored regression package, sense reg right there. We're going to load that in. All right. Uh, and then we can go ahead and run our Tobit model using the sense reg function that comes in the sense reg package. So we're going to run our Tobit. Uh, so we're going to have our sensor or Tobit model using sense reg. All right. So uh, we're going to include a uh, regression equation in here just like we normally would. We're going to say wage. Uh, we're going to have that as a function, let's say, uh, female and education uh, and tenure, job tenure, okay? Uh, we have our data is wage one. And now we need to tell it where the data is censored. And particularly, we are left censored here, right? Because uh, it, we, if we think about putting the number on a number line to the left, we have uh, the, the smaller values and we've taken all the small values and we pretended that we can't see them, okay? So we're going to be left censored at three. Uh, and so I can go ahead and run that. We have our Tobit model. Now let's go ahead and look at that with Stargazer. Right, so we got to load in Stargazer first. And we get our Tobit model, right? And it will, of course, account for some of the uh, censoring that we have in our data. That's one way that we can work with censored data using the Tobit model. And of course, you could, don't have to just be censored on the left. You could also be censored on the right or both, okay, depending on what it is. Uh, we're also gonna look at the Heckman model. Now, the Heckman model is an important model. Uh, and it's basically used when part of your sample, the dependent variable is unobserved. And there's a reason that it's unobserved. So the classic example of this uh, is looking at uh, what predicts somebody's wages, but when you have a problem in that people who don't, aren't working, you can't see their wages, right? But likely they would have had lower wages than everybody else, right? Because probably the people who aren't working are people who can't make as much money in the first place, right? That's the reason, one reason to work is to get money. If you can't make much money, why bother working, right? So uh, we're going to model the selection into the sample with the Heckman model, okay? Uh, so we're going to, that is going to be in the sample selection package. So let's load that in library sample selection. Oh, finishing that for me right there. There we go. Sample selection. Okay. So uh, we have this sample selection model, uh, and now we're going to want to run uh, a Heckman model with it. Uh, and that is going to be with the selection function. The selection function is going to have kind of a weird uh, format to it. Run a Heckman. There we go. Uh, so we're going to have our Heckman model with our selection. Okay. Let's go ahead and, and look at the selection uh, syntax, which might help us 
run this because there's going to be two stages to this. Okay, the first stage is going to be modeling the selection into the sample. You can see it's got uh, our selection model right there, and then we're going to actually model the, the the regression of interest that we're trying to estimate. Right? Because if we don't correct for that selection of the sample, the actual model itself is going to be biased. We don't want that. Uh, so uh, we want our dependent variable. Uh, we first we're going to write the, the regression model for our selection model. Right? So we're, we're trying to model selection of the sample. And what's the dependent variable in this? Well, it's getting into the sample. Who gets into the sample? The people who have non-missing wage data. So let's do that. So we're going to say you get into the sample if you're, uh, if you're not, the exclamation mark, uh, missing, so we're going to say is.na for wage. What this is, what's this doing? So it's going to take the wage variable. The is.na function is going to check is this data missing? Is it na? Okay, because we set everything to na earlier, right? Uh, and if it is equal to na, it's going to give me a one. If it's not equal to na, it's going to give me a zero. And I want to reverse that. So that's what the ex that's what the exclamation mark is for. That's going to say, okay, give me a one if it's not missing, that is if it's in the sample. Give me a zero if it is missing, that is if it's not in the sample, okay? Uh, we're going to make that be a function of some other stuff. So we're going to female, education, tenure, uh, and let's say living in the south. That's the name of that variable. Uh, and so then, after the comma, we're going to then do the actual regression model itself. Uh, so in that case, we're going to be regressing wage on female, education and tenure okay now you'll notice I have a variable in the first in the selection model that I don't have in the actual outcome model itself that's generally something that you want to have um, now granted you want a variable to be there that should that doesn't make any sense in the actual model itself so that's you're kind of like selecting an instrument for instrumental variables that's a similar idea here it's not technically an instrument but it's the same idea uh, but if you don't have that, if you have the exact same set of variables in the selection model and the outcome model, uh, then you're what's called identified on the nonlinearity of the model, which is not something you exactly have to worry about, but it's not a great thing to be. You want to have some sort of instrument for your selection model there. Okay, so we have our data is the wage one data. We can go ahead and run that. We have our Heckman model right there. And let's look at our results. with Stargazer. Uh-oh, we got some sample, some uh, standard error issues there. Uh, didn't like my model. I just sort of picked it out of the air. But if you run an actual model that makes sense, it will, uh, it will give you some actual standard errors there. But that is how you run a Heckman model. Now, one last thing uh, that we did not talk about is getting uh, marginal effects for your Tobit model. So your Tobit model presents coefficients that are, don't have quite the same interpretation as your standard uh, OLS coefficients. So we're going to use the marge F uh, command that is in the uh, that is already in the senseReg package. Uh, so we're just going to basically say marge f of our Tobit model. All right. If we run that, it will give us the marginal effect of each of the variables in our Tobit model, accounting for the censoring that is that the Tobit model is there to handle. All right. That's it. That's the basics of some censored data analyses with Tobit and the Heckman model. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.